Retailers are doubling down on cost-saving measures as inflation spikes, but also doing what they can to keep merchandise compelling for shoppers. Joining us exclusively following the company's investor day on Wednesday afternoon is Levi Strauss CFO Harmeet Singh. Harmeet, good to see you. Clearly you mean business today. You have the leather jacket on instead of the traditional Harmeet jean jacket. Let me ask you this. So I, your, your five-year outlook was pretty interesting. You plan to add, I would say, a little more than $3 billion in sales over the next five years. How, how do you get there? Yeah, sure. Um, Brian, thanks for having me. And uh, what I'm wearing is the uh, Minok uh, Cossack Classic jacket that uh, by Levi's that um, Albert Einstein wore for a long time in the 1930s. And we picked it up and a collection um, team, a vintage clothing team, uh, came up with a replica that we that uh, has sold really well. So to your question about um, you know uh, what gives us confidence about accelerating growth, um, you know uh, we went public a couple of years ago. We run the company for the long term. The Levi's brand is the strongest it's ever been, as demonstrated by record gross margins and our market leadership position that we continue to grow. Structurally, we're a very different company today. We're more diversified. Uh, direct to consumer is 40% of our business. It used to be half that. You know, women's is a third of our business and accretive to gross margins. And uh, wholesale is healthier and a uh, lot more profitable. And financially, you know, we just reported the strongest year in 21 in decades. Uh, our balance sheet is really strong. Our EBIT margins is north of 12%. So it's time to accelerate growth, accelerate profitability and commit to a high return of capital. Uh, what is going to drive the growth? A couple of things. Um, first, um, we have five brands. We acquired Beyond Yoga. Dockers uh, was uh, declining till a couple of uh, years ago. So all our five brands, as we reported in quarter one, are growing. Uh, casualization trend is here to stay. That is a great uh, tailwind. Uh, we believe we can double women's. We can double our tops business. We still sell three bottoms to uh, one uh, top. The ratio is one to one. And you know, our, our thinking is we can get to two to one by 2027. Uh, we believe our direct to consumer business, which is 40%, can get to 55%. Uh, we think we can open 400 new doors across all our brands over the next five years and continue to drive same store sales. Uh, we also, e-commerce is fairly underpenetrated for the company. It's uh, only 8% of our total business. It used to be 2% a decade ago, has grown during the pandemic, and we believe we can triple that. Um, and all the categories and areas we're looking at are um, high gross margin. So that drives uh, higher EBIT margin. And uh, today we're a little over 12%. Our view is by 2027, that becomes about uh, 15%, generating a lot of cash, which we start returning to uh, shareholders in the form of higher dividends and share repurchase program. Our board um, a couple of days ago approved uh, a share repurchase program of 750 million for the next couple of years. So that gives, you know, all these things give us confidence. Harmeet, I talked to you about a month ago uh, in New York City over at the NASDAQ. Things seem fine uh, with retail. And then since then, the bottom has dropped out. Inventories are piling up. We've had various warnings, profit margins under pressure. How is your current quarter looking? Yeah, you know, um, we report in a month. Uh, we don't guide quarterly. What I said yesterday in, in the investor meeting, uh, we ended our quarter in uh, on Sunday, so the ink is not dry. But we believe, based on trends we are we are seeing, we will meet our own internal expectations, and we've reaffirmed our annual guidance uh, that we gave out. Um, you know, when you reported Q1 which basically translates to 11 to 13% growth in revenue uh, relative to 2021 uh, and um, uh, an EPS of uh, between $1.50 to $1.56. So overall, because of the diversified, diversified nature of our business, uh, you know, we feel uh, fairly um, confident about affirming our fully our guidance. Hey, Harmeet, Brad here. Um, when you think about the direct-to-consumer goals that you've set forth and the, that five-year target even, and the new doors that you anticipate opening even in the future as well, would that lead to a, a trimming of some of the retail partnerships that you have that are not run by Levi's? Yeah, no, it's a good question. Uh, uh, you know, we said 
um, you know, one of our strategies, uh, our three ch uh, choices with DDC first, it doesn't mean DDC only. Uh, we have strong relationships with our retailers and customers around the world. They're very important part of our business. Um, you know, our focus on direct to consumer is to drive the direct engagement with the consumer. We, you know, Levi's is becoming a more lifestyle uh, product, a head to toe look. You know, um, I'm wearing the Levi's shirt and the Levi's uh, jacket. Uh, so it's more than uh, pure bottoms. And direct to consumer and our own stores allow us to bring the assortments uh, to life. And that's why uh, we think opening doors and growing e commerce is important. Um, our uh, doors perform really well. The return on invested capital is in the high teens. Uh, and, um, you know, so it's profitable as well as allows us to showcase, uh, showcase and engage directly with the consumer. Um, and our wholesale customers are also, you know, uh, beginning to show more of a head to toe look for Levi's. And, uh, you know, we are focused on premiumizing, at least in the US, uh, the brand offer with wholesale customers as we expand relationships with Nostrum, with Target, et cetera. Okay, and so that starts to get into my next question, particularly around the type, the profile of customer that really kind of allows you to put out these targets and gives you the confidence to meet them over the next five years. Yeah, sure. You know, uh, 10 years ago, uh, cost, the average age of, age of a consumer in the in the US was, was older. It was in the high 40s. Today, it's a lot younger. So we're doing a great job um, you know, connecting with the younger consumer, the, mini, the millennials, the Gen Zs, especially as we, you know, drive more brand heat through collaborations. I was wearing a New Balance collaboration yesterday. We've got wonderful collaborations. And so, you know, our view is being a democratic brand across all our brands, we're connecting with consumers of all ages and demographics uh, around the world. Uh, and I think that's really what's helping us, you know, accelerate growth and uh, drive the direct engagement. We also are rolling out a loyalty program. Uh, you know, we have about 19 million, um, you know, loyal fans today. You know, our view is we can have a lot more loyal fans, but we're just beginning the rollout. We're seeing our loyal fans uh, engage, you know, more directly with us, more frequently with us. And I think that makes a big difference. Harmeet, I think the word you, you used yesterday with regards to pricing is you have taken surgical price increases. What does that exactly mean? And gene prices, they've gotten expensive. What type of increases have you taken? Yeah, no, you know, we, uh, we um, started taking price uh, increases about a year ago because, uh, you know, we were um, mindful of the fact that inflation probably is here and here, uh, you know, uh, for longer than was indicated. Um, our, uh, we ha the brand, because the brand and so strong has pricing power. But we are very mindful, Brian, about the price value equation. And our view is based on research that despite the price increases that we have taken, we uh, our, our brands provide real value. Our products provide real value to the, uh, to the consumer. Um, when, when I talked about, or we talked about surgical pricing, it is very important uh, to ensure that uh, when we price, we price for innovation, for value that we provide. So all our, as we introduce uh, new styles, our circular uh, 501, that was priced higher because it was, you know, it, it, it has organic cotton. It is something that a consumer needs and uh, is better for you. And, uh, you know, so from our perspective, those are the things that drive it. So when you think about surgical pricing, it's not taking a standard pricing increase across the board. That is something that we do, but that's uh, that last piece of action. We're also using AI and machine learning to decide what are the levels of markdown, what are the levels of pricing based on price elasticity that we see with different consumers. So it's uh, it's very thoughtfully done um, and done in a very disciplined way. Armit, always a pleasure to speak with you and thanks for taking the time here. We're going to be keeping a close tab on the company and, of course, some of these targets that you've laid out. Levi Strauss, Enco CFO, Harmeet Singh, joining us here today on Yahoo Finance Live.